Thank you, Jim, and the Linux Foundation for the amazing work that you all do, and the opportunity for us to talk a little bit about how AWS thinks about open source technologies, and specifically open source databases. So I'll talk a little bit about why Amazon invests in open source, um, how we invest in it, and really close with a call to action. We have significantly increased our investment in open source communities and open source databases over the last few years. We want to continue growing that investment, and we want to grow it with you. So let's get to it. So why do we invest in open source? You know, pretty much the same reason many of you chose open source. Our stakeholders demand it. Amazon, by and large, is built on open source technology. Just as one data point, we have hundreds of Amazon teams that use Amazon Aurora, which is a Postgres and MySQL compatible database. Our customers love it too. Right? Many of our customers are making big bets on open source, especially in the AWS side. And frankly, the world depends on it. You know, I've read a stat recently that said 95% of all organizations worldwide use open source technology. And one of Amazon's leadership principles is that success and scale bring responsibility. And so we just think it is the right thing to do. We want to give back more. So that's one reason we invest in open source, our stakeholders want it. The other one, and I'm just preaching to the choir here, is that we see value in it. Melissa mentioned some of this a few minutes ago in her talk, but transparency and auditability, we believe, improves security, right? The best dis disinfectant is sunshine. Bringing the best minds together, we can move faster on behalf of our customers, accelerate innovation. And then the last is flexibility. A lot of our customers choose open source because they want freedom. They want freedom from a database, freedom from a vendor. They want to be able to control their destiny. So same reasons as you are the same reasons we invest in open source. But then that begs the question, how do we invest in open source? And as with everything we do in Amazon, we work back from customers. And there's really two things that customers have asked us in terms of how they want us to invest. The first, and this goes back to sort of the beginning of AWS, is customers have asked us to make open source technologies easier to operate in the cloud. Right? And that's been the bulk of our investment in the past. That's probably what you know AWS for. More recently, I'd say over the last two, three, four years, customers who have been using our services have asked us to more directly wade into the open source community and drive open source databases directly. So let's get into this a little bit. In terms of making open source databases simpler to operate in the web, frankly, when you're running a database, there's just a ton of work to do, right? And you see all the different items here. And the stuff that you see on the right, you know, whether it's failover, backup, patching, HIPAA compliance, whatever it is that your business needs, but is not necessarily differentiating to your business, can take a significant amount of your team's work. It's what we would call undifferentiated heavy lifting. And the first thing customers asked us when we started AWS is take this off our hands. This, doesn't add, this is important for our business, but it's not differentiating for our business. And that's what we do with many of our managed services is we take all this undifferentiated heavy lifting off of our customers' hands so that they can operate the open source databases in a way that's unique to their business, whether it's schema design, query construction, query optimization. And that's really where you know, we got our start. We have the broadest and deepest set of database services. And what you see here highlighted is all the database services that rely on open source technology. Whether it's Postgres, MySQL, or MariaDB on the relational side, or things like Apache Tinkerpop, um, Valky, you know, with Redis, um, and caching, and Cassandra, and InfluxDB. We've done this, customers love this, a lot of customers use open source databases on AWS, and we're gonna continue doing this as customers ask us. So our most recent entrant is Amazon TimeStream for InfluxDB. We just announced it a few weeks ago. And it's built for operational time series use cases. So Amazon TimeStream itself has been around for a little bit. And what customers asked us was, the original version of TimeStream was great for analytics use cases, but they also wanted time series for operational databases. And they were telling us, hey, look at this Influx DB thing. It's, it's fantastic. Is there a way for you to partner with Influx Data to offer it jointly where you get the best power of InfluxDB along with the manageability and operational excellence that AWS is known for. And so that's what we did. We reached out to InfluxData, we partnered with them, and we're offering this jointly. And I'd encourage you to visit the AWS booth where you have folks from both InfluxData and from Amazon Timestream who'd be happy to answer any of your questions. So that's one part of how we invest in open source databases, make databases simpler to operate. 
But as I mentioned, over the last couple of years, customers have asked us to more directly wade into open source technologies. And that's precisely what we've done. This is just a 2023 stat, but we've had over 550 contributions accepted in the major projects that you see here, but also some of the adjacent projects. This does not include any other work that we do on Linux, Kubernetes, OpenSearch, or any of the other technologies. This is just transactional databases. I'll give you a flavor of the work that we have done. I'll start with perhaps something that's the most tactical, right? And this may seem like a little bit of an oddball, but I want to give you a feel for how we think about the work we do. So we released a feature called Dedicated Log Volumes last year, won't go into the details, but it relied on the ext4 big alloc capability. ext4, of course, is the file system module in the Linux kernel. And we ran into some crashes, we ran into some scaling issues with ext4, and so we reached out to the uh, maintainers, and we upstream the changes back into Linux, which is now available on Amazon Linux, and we consume it the way any other open source customer would. On MariaDB, we've been investing heavily from a coding perspective. We're now the number three coder in the project behind MariaDB Corporation and Foundation. On that basis, they invited us to join the board, so we're now part of the governance team. And we also made a substantial financial contribution to make sure that the foundation could continue to invest in the areas that MariaDB customers want the project to go, for example, vector support. Madeline spoke a few minutes about Redis. You know, she's got another talk this afternoon, so I won't go into it. But we're longtime contributors to Redis, and now we're a founding member of Valky. But really, the place we put most of our effort in, as I say, is Postgres. A lot of customers are flocking to Postgres. They've asked us to take a more active role in Postgres, and that's precisely what we've done. We invest in the core server, we invest in the community, and we also invest in extensions, which I think of them as plugins, but it's one of the places where there's a hotbed of innovation. On the core server, over the last couple of years, we've built up a dedicated team that's 100% focused on just upstream contributions. They don't focus on any of the other stuff except upstream work. And having this dedicated team has really allowed us to step up our contributions into the code base. We're now the second largest contributor to Postgres from a feature standpoint. But you know, features are the fun, shiny stuff. As any of you who works in open source, you know that there's also a lot of plumbing that has to go into it. Uh, you know, the, unsung, important work, and Amazon's now the number one code reviewer for, for Postgres. So that's an example of what we're doing in the core server, and in terms of the work itself, we want to be humble, we want to learn from the Postgres community. Clearly, they've done a lot of great work. What we do is share what our customers are asking for Postgres, and our contributors team ends up reflecting some of our customers' requirements into the core engine. So for example, in PG16, a lot of customers want to improve logical replication, which frankly was a area of uh, improvement for Postgres. And in PG-17, you know, one of the areas that I'm calling out here is um, Postgres uses glibc, or historically has used glibc for collation. glibc changes collation from minor version to minor version. So when we do an operating system upgrade on behalf of a customer, it can be fairly tricky for a database. Because if you have a B tree that's using glibc for determining sort order, once you do an operating system patch, your sort order can change, which clearly is not a good thing for databases. And so one of the contributors on our team has now created a immutable collation. And again, it's a tiny example, but an important example of the kinds of work we're doing to improve the core engine. I won't go into a ton of this, but we are part of many different governance boards in Postgres, and we are a substantial uh, financial contributor to both the core Postgres Foundation, but also various events. And the last thing I'll talk about is our work on extensions. As I mentioned, extensions are a very powerful method in Postgres where that's really one of the things that makes Postgres sing. You can innovate around the edges without being tied to the core. And we have done two important projects here. One is what we call trusted language extensions. It's an opportunity for builders and customers to not be tied to a cloud vendor like us. It's a completely open source project, but where you can bring your own extension into Postgres and run it in a safe runtime. And the other has to do with PG Vector, which has gotten a lot of resonance for generative AI use cases. So trusted language extensions, is, as I mentioned, open source project. Extensions are very powerful, but they're also challenging. Most extensions are written in C, and they require a lot of testing when you do a Postgres upgrade. And so with TLE, we have essentially created a safe runtime where builders can bring their own extensions. You know, Baffle and Superbase are good examples. A customer's DBA can decide what policies they want to uh, implement in their enterprise. And you can essentially bring your own extension into Amazon Aurora or Amazon RDS. 
And then we went one step further based on customer feedback and uh, builder feedback. They wanted capabilities, they wanted to be able to run Rust. A big reason people use uh, C is performance, and they wanted something that's safe, and so we work with TCDI, which is the maintainer of Rust, and now it's available as part of TLE. So one call to action, if you're not familiar with TLE, please visit our website, learn about this. A lot of builders are finding value in this as a way to get capabilities to their customers quickly without being tied to Amazon's own certification process. The other thing I'd call out is PG Vector. Um, lots of interest in generative AI from our customers. You all have probably heard of RAG or Retrieval aug Augmented Generation. And it relies on having data from the database that you can pull in into your LLM. Andrew Kane has done fantastic work with PG Vector. It's found a lot of resonance with customers. And again, the way we see our role, and we see our role not just with PG Vector, but anyone else who's interested in developing extensions, one is we want to make your technology accessible to our customers. We can either do it through a first party certification or we can do it through TLE, which I mentioned. We also want to contribute code where we can help. But really, we want to bring our customers' insights to you so that you can build better products for our shared customers. So a call to action again, we've invested a lot in the last few years, we're still learning, we want to invest more. So we're looking for feedback from this group on what we can do better. We're looking for feedback on opportunities to collaborate and we'd love to work more with you. Thank you all. Thanks,